Welcome back to Mark Haney, igniting the entrepreneurial revolution with the Haney Biz Project. Welcome back to the Haney Biz Project, brought to you courtesy of my friends at Sun System Technologies. I'm Mark Haney, and today I am joined by Steve Swan, founder and CEO of Valley Healthcare. How are you doing, Steve? I'm well, Mark. How are you? I'm doing great. Now, your good friends call you Swanee. Can I call you Swanee? Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. I'm, I'm in the club. I'm good company now. All right. Okay, so tell us about... Valley Healthcare and the dream of Valley Healthcare. Sure. Well, Valley Healthcare is a travel nurse company. We've been around for about 15 years. Um, we've we've uh, headquartered in the Sacramento. I've always been in Sacramento. We're locally grown and grown up in yes, Sacramento. Yes, yes, You're a Christian Brothers guy. I'm a Christian Brothers guy. That's right. Um, outside of that, I think what we do unique at Valley is we're an IT-enabled company, an innovative company for travel nursing. Okay. So we do a little bit more than, than place nurses. We, we take advantage of technology in order to do it very effectively and efficiently. Sometimes our, our, uh, our dreams or our visions, they change. When you launched the company, you weren't focused on the health side of things. Tell us about the initial dream and how you, uh, you look to pivot. Yep, sure. We, were, we had uh, another company that was focused on IT development, professional services, mostly on the IBM platform. We were doing a lot of development for hospitals, and with the IT implosion in 2001, there was a there was a necessary pivot. Yeah, but the but it was very serendipitous. The, uh, we were lucky to have the convergence of one opportunity sort of dwindle and another one present itself, nice. and that was healthcare staffing. How painful was that IT uh, the the dot com crash? For you guys, because it sounds like you pivoted pretty quickly. We did pretty quickly. We had a lot of business with the state at the time, okay. so that did make it hurt. They they turned off all of their uh, financing ah. just literally overnight. We went from Friday to Monday with with half the size of our company that we oh had when my we left gosh. on Friday. Yeah, so some it was people think, bu- think building businesses is, is easy and, and it's all fun and uh, indeed and, and, and vacations <laughs> and all that, but sometimes it's like half the staff. Half the staff, uh, half the revenue, and you have to, when you talk about pivot, you're really making decisions that are difficult for everybody. All the stakeholders are, uh, it, 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 it's a challenge, and it certainly makes you learn as an entrepreneur. So the company now is focused on the healthcare side of things, and it's nurses, and it's traveling nurses. That's right. But you're the type of guy that uh, that has to differentiate your product, which your product is the nurse. Um, how is your offering different than, let's say, your competitors? So we can do something a lot faster. There are two facets that make us better than the other choice. Uh, one, we take care of our people like they're going to be with us forever. We have the best benefits, the best 401k. We match 5%. PTO, sick time, gym memberships, all the things that you would find in a full-time job is also available to our travel nurses. Okay. We also, I mentioned earlier that we innovate. We can do things faster than anybody out there. So when an, uh, when an order comes up, and let's say it's a hospital in New Hampshire and it's 2 in the morning on a Sunday, if we've got a nurse that was interested in New Hampshire and we've got her information, we can submit her instantaneously as that order comes up. Okay. So being with us, they're going to be first in line. If they're with somebody else, they may wait until 9 a.m. after coffee talk and before they sit down, and, uh-huh. and, and we're two days ahead so of them. So your already. technology gets the nurse placed quicker, so you're more likely to get the order, to get the patient uh, served uh, exactly. on, on time. So Because I can imagine that if a hospital is short-staffed, that could be a tremendous problem for that hospital. Yes, both from a clinical side and economically. They're, they're paying somebody to take care of the patients, and the patients may not necessarily be getting the best care yeah. for somebody who's been on the shift for 14 hours. Yeah. So we're helping, we're helping a wide variety of stakeholders there, particularly the patient. And I'm picturing myself as a nurse. What a cool job. You want to travel somewhere. Let's say I want to go to San Diego. I'd like to work the next six months in San Diego. Or you pick some uh, place else on the map and that seems cool. Maybe a family member lives somewhere. You can choose that and just go do a six-month stint. Absolutely. Generally, our assignments are 13 weeks in length, but the hospitals okay. most often want the nurse to extend for another 13 weeks, making it a six-month assignment wow. at, at minimum. And you're right. They go from Hawaii to Denver to Scottsdale to Fort Lauderdale. It's it's a pretty good gig, and they make great money doing it. And with all the benefits of being of having a regular job, you talked about four hundred one k, and exactly. I think you pay for gym memberships and things like that. Exactly. So there, there. Formerly, it wasn't an alternative. It is today. Formerly, it was just strictly on pay, and the agencies were were treating their nurses just like temp staff. And anymore, we have to be an attractive second option and 
and the best option fundamentally. And how important was your tech background? Obviously, your your product, uh, you get to market quicker because of uh, because of your technology. What kind of differences have you already seen that making? Uh, tremendous. Because I think we can, when you can leverage the technology skills and apply it to a real world problem, which we have, and, and you know, in healthcare, things don't necessarily change unless they're litigated or legislated. So we are trying to be the one that's the innovator to make it better. And you think about that hospital that needs a nurse quickly, why wouldn't they use Valley? Because we can get them a nurse much faster than anybody else. So what we've done is we've examined all the best products that are out there, innovated any bridges we've needed to, to get them all to talk to each other. Um, and it's, it's been a whirlwind this past year. <laughs> well, you, you talked to me earlier about a, a cultural renaissance and I, and I wonder what that means uh, in terms of, I mean, I walked into your office and you have a cool vibe, but when you say renaissance, that makes me think that it, it was a major change, right? A rebirth. You had to, you changed something big. What happened to cause this renaissance? It was. So we, we didn't pay a lot of attention to people, uh, to be very plain. We had since 2000, see 2002, when we formalized the company, it was, uh, we had a certain compression in labor market and, and labor availability. And we were hiring who was available rather than who was necessarily the right person for our team. Mm -hmm. So we stopped, figured out what are we all about? What's our noble cause? What makes us tick? What are our virtues? And then started to identify the ideal team players that fit that. And it's an extensive process to get hired at Valley. Formerly was show up, interview, and that's it. Yeah. And now it takes quite some time to make sure that they are the right one for us and we're the right match for them too. Yeah. And I, that's got to make working in your office uh, like uh, way more fun than it used to be. Uh, that is true. I mean, it seemed fun. We were walking through the other, uh, other day and it was almost like a tech company right. kind of atmosphere. Yeah. Open I have floor plan. Yeah. I have an absolute blast going to the office and I, I, I struggle to even call it work. Yeah. We have such a good time with each other. I'm surrounded by the very best people. Um, and, it just makes it great. Throw yourself into something you love. and You never work a day in your life, and you have somebody you love. Well, I think you love everybody on your team, but you work with your wife. How is that I working do. out for you? Yeah, about <laughs> three feet away. <laughs> oh, really? She's, <laughs> She's within arm's reach Whose of me. Whose decision was that for her to be three feet away? Is that your decision, or is that her decision? Uh, probably the rest of the team. Let's, all, let's put them on the outside here. I see so. how it is. Uh, but she's great. She's a cornerstone of the office. She tackles, we call her our, our Bill Miller. She's our utility infielder. She okay. does any way, anything from client experience to compliance. That's to, a Giants reference, right? It is a Giants yes, reference. San Francisco right. Giants, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, and she, she does it with a smile. She's the energy of the office. And um, everybody learns a lot from her, including me. One of the interview questions that you ask is something along the lines of, what was the hardest you worked at something and you didn't get it. I'm going to ask you that question. What's the hardest you've worked mm. at something and it didn't happen? You didn't get it. I would say playing sports in high school, working as hard as you could in the off season and not getting a starting position. Oh. And you have two choices. You can sit there and have a pity party mm -hmm. or you can work harder and support the person that's in front of you. It's amazing how lessons learned on the ball field they transfer to building a business. Have you seen that? Singer brother is, <laughs> is one of the things we ask. You know, if you've been part of a team, and it doesn't necessarily have to be athletics. Name name a time you were part of a team and describe what your role was within yeah. that team. Were mm -hmm. you the leader? Were you were you a support? Were what things did you do to ensure that the the team was successful? So it's not just being on the team. It's what what are you contributing to make sure that you're. Your buddy to your left and your buddy to your right are successful too. You bet. Now, uh, your family business, your son uh, is home from Berkeley and he's joined. You see him uh, stayed in the family footsteps or? Uh, I, that's a good question. It's it, maybe he's a computer <laughs> science major. So okay. I, it's in his blood, it's in his DNA. Um, he's actually at the office now. He's helping us as part of his uh, summer work, earning off all the debt that he's incurred over the past <laughs> uh, 20 years. Yes, good uh, for But him. doing a very, very good job. He's, he's, um, He's very exact and precise in the way he works, and he's got a very strong work ethic. So who do you look up to most? You have your team. Um, I know you have a, a strong uh, philosophical belief. Where did that come from, and who do you look up to most today? Ah, that's a good question. Um, this is going to be sort of odd, but I really look up to the people that I work with. Um, they are the inspiration. Um, everybody works really hard. They work hard for each other. Uh, so I can't put it on one single person, but I would say that uh, we've got a pretty awesome 
um, workforce at Valley. So just that last question, we were kind of uh, running out of time here. So advice to up and coming entrepreneurs that want to scale their business. You, yep. you guys have grown very rapidly. Mm-hmm. You took on uh, some investment uh, of sorts uh, with uh, Jose Blanco's right. group, in fact. Any advice to entrepreneurs about how to, you know, chasing their dream and having confidence to chase their dream as well as bringing in an investor? Is that um, just advice along those lines? Yeah, I think it depends on what you want to do. First of all, I do something unique and, and be innovative. Don't be, I'm entering that market because I see other people are making money. You will be one of the lemmings. Do something better than the last person and for, well, fundamentally first learn a skill. I, I do see some some younger entrepreneurs just want to get into entrepreneurship for the sake of being an entrepreneur, right? But haven't really developed any of the skill sets to make them unique. Go get your ten thousand hours, yes, or whatever exactly. the number is. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Go get your ten thousand hours and be the best at something. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. make it so people want you. And then with respect to taking on investment capital, um, I think it just all depends upon timing. We were with a great organization, DCA Capital, that you know. You bet. It was the right time for us. And we went to another fund with uh, Central Valley Fund as DCA exited their horizon. Um, And it depends what you want to do. You want to grow organically, inorganically. Is it working capital you're looking for? Is it R&D? It really is going to depend on where you are in that life cycle. Yeah. So don't just take on the money if you don't need it. Absolutely. It's, you've got to have a reason. Your reason obviously is going to grow. I mean, in terms of looking out to the future, you guys have had tremendous growth. What do you see for the foreseeable future in terms of growth? Uh, we will be doubling in size multiple times here in the next several years. So it's wow. we have built with the marketing and sales funnel that we have built. It is uh, Today, it's us keeping up. Wow. It's not us seeking, it's us reeling in. Doubling si- in size every couple of years right here in Sacramento, launching a business that goes all over the country. I want to thank you for coming on the on the show today, Steve, and uh, definitely Pleasure. want to thank Jose Blanco for joining us. When we return, Marcus and Caroline will rejoin me, and we'll continue the discussion on living the American dream, Haney Biz style. Join the revolution at HaneyBiz.com. This is the Haney Biz Project. <laughs>